Okay, let's correct part two of this exam today. I'm hoping these videos are a little bit more helpful so you don't just see the answer, but you see why you got that answer. So let's remember that when we have a rational exponent, the top one stands for the exponent, and this one is the root. So we're really just finding the cube root of 64, therefore our answer is B. All right, now this one here says write as a radical. We're not gonna solve this or anything, but remembering exponent root. So we're going to write fourth root of 42, and then we're going to raise that to the exponent 5. Okay, so our answer should have been, again, b. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to write this as a power. So we remember that the radicand becomes the base. So we're going to have 3 quarters. Put it in brackets. And then I always just draw that line there, and then I think which one was the exponent? It was a 9. The root is uh, the invisible 2. So 3 quarters raised to the 9 halves. And that answer is again, B. Okay, now this one says evaluate. So first thing we're gonna deal with is that negative exponent. We're gonna write the reciprocal of the base. The reciprocal of three is one third, and this becomes a squared. One squared is one, remember, three squared is nine. Now your answer is C. Okay, again, we're gonna evaluate. So we're gonna write the reciprocal of the brace. Reciprocal of two thirds is three halves. This becomes a positive exponent. Three times three times three, like don't get caught there and write nine, okay, is 27. And two times two times two is eight. So your answer here should have been, again, C. All right, now simplify. Remembering that this little dot means multiply. When we're multiplying bases that are the same, we add the exponents. So M, and then we have a negative two plus three, okay? And then we have an n, and we have 6 minus 8. Now, you don't have to do this step. I'm just showing you where I'm getting the math from. So we're going to get an m to the 1, which we don't usually write, but I'm just going to do that. And then n to the negative 2. And we don't ever have negative exponents. So remember that everything's really over that invisible 1. So in order to make this a positive exponent, we're going to move it to the denominator, which is like writing its reciprocal. So m over n squared. Let's go back and see if that's an answer. Yep, b. All right, first page. Here we go. Now we're going to evaluate its short answer. So the first thing I would do is I would write that as 25 one hundredths. You could do it on a calculator, but I just like to do this. Okay, we're going to find the square root because exponent root of 25 one hundredths, which is 5 tenths, which is 1 half. All right, now here we've got exponent of 4 and a root of 3. So we're going to find the cube root of 125 over 8, and then we're going to raise that to the exponent 4. You can have a calculator handy, right? The cube root of 125 is 5, cube root of 8 is 2. We're going to raise that to the exponent 4. So we're going to get 625 over 16. You can reduce that, but you know, I'm, I'm A-OK -okay with that, right? I don't much care for mixed fractions. Okay, so the first thing we got to deal with here is this negative exponent. So it's going to be 1 over 64 to the 4 thirds. So let's just do this step by step. It's never a race, right? Even when we're in the classroom, it's not a race. Exponent root. We want to be methodical. Cube root of 1 over 64. Then we're going to raise that to the exponent 4. Cube root of 1 is simply 1. Cube root of 64 is 4. And now we're going to raise that to the exponent 4. So 1 to the exponent 4 stays 1. And 4 to the exponent 4 is going to be 256. Final answer. Here we go. So now we got this little odd thing. We have negative 75 one hundredths, which is negative 3 quarters. So that's our new exponent here, right? So we're going to write the reciprocal of this base. So it's going to be 256 625 fifths to the exponent 3 quarters which means we're going to find the fourth root of 256 over 625, and then we're going to cube that answer. So what is the fourth root of 256? 4. What is the fourth root of 625? 5. We're halfway there. Now we've got to cube that, and 4 cubed is 64, and 5 cubed is 125. Okay, so now we've got 64 one hundredths raised to the negative one half. So I'm going to flip it, write the reciprocal of the base to the one half, and now simply find the square root of 100 over 64, which is 10 over 8, 
which now I would have an issue with. You can't leave it like that. Okay, I don't mind an improper fraction, but that would be five quarters. Or you could write one and a quarter. You could have one and 25 one hundredths. All of those are the same answer. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to do the numerical coefficients, but those don't divide. 15 doesn't divide equally into 12, and I won't let you have a decimal there. So what we're going to do is go back to our grade 9 roots. We're going to simplify. Okay, so what's the biggest number that goes into 12 and also goes into 15? It is 3, so it goes in there 4 fifths. Okay, and now we're going to take care of the exponents, or I'm sorry, the variables. So we've got p's to take care of first. So remember there's an invisible 1 here, so 3 minus 1, we're going to get p squared in the numerator. And now for the q's, we're going to have negative 7 take away 6 more, which is negative 13. Okay, now you didn't have to do this you could have done this whole thing at one time. That can't stay there, so it's in the numerator currently. We're going to put it in the denominator, so your final answer should look like this. Okay, if you put that Q to the exponent 13 on the bottom, it becomes positive. Okay, this one's a little tougher, but not overwhelming. Exponent root, so we're going to find the cube root of all of this. And then we are going to square it. All right, so what's the cube root of 64? We do it piece by piece, just go nice and slow. Four, cube root of a to the exponent 12. We basically are dividing by three. Okay, b to the power of five. And now don't forget, we've got to square that. It goes to the four, power of a power. Four squared is 16. a to the power of four squared. Remember, power of a power, we multiply those exponents. b to the power of... 10. Almost done. All right, here we go. So we got this power of a power. We've got to do this piece first. So we're going to end up with m to the power of negative 3, but n to the power of positive 3 because we have a negative times a negative. Okay, on the bottom, m to the power of negative 8, n to the power of 4. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our gazintas here. We know that when we divide, we subtract, but if we subtract a negative 8, we get a positive 8. So on top, we're going to have m to the power of positive 5. Here, if we subtract 4, we're going to get n to the power of negative 1. We cannot have a negative exponent. m to the power of 5 over n would be our final answer. All right, here it looks like it's going to be gross, but it's not. When we're multiplying, we add the exponents. We don't touch the base, okay? 7 quarters plus 1 quarter is 8 quarters. The line in a fraction simply means to divide. So we end up with negative 8 fifths squared. That's it. And now we're going to do that. And we have a negative, we have a positive, or an even exponent. So we're going to end up with 64 20 fifths. Okay, let's go back here now. All right, this looks tough, but it's not. I'd always start by in the inside if I can. So 36 divided by 4 is 9, okay? I'm going to subtract the exponents and get negative 4. I'm going to subtract the exponents and get positive 4 to the 1 half. So now I'm going to move this negative exponent to the bottom. And I'm going to get 9y to the power of 4 over x to the power of 4. And now we still have to take care of this 1 half. So now all we're going to do is find the square root of 9y to the power of 4 x to the power of 4. What's the square root of 9? 3. What's the square root of y to the power of 4? y squared. What's the square root of x to the power of 4? x squared. And that's your final answer. Okay, go back and check your work. Let me know how you did. I'm, I'm curious to see how you did. I will also post this in just paper form. Okay.